Hello, how's it going, guys? Now, I actually have made a just a in-depth review about my playthrough of the new Pokemon games. It's going to be in my uh, Z Huts Gaming Corner uh, channel. I'll send a link to the video, and if you want to like and comment and subscribe, that video is going to be about like gaming clips, like my gaming clips and my gaming reviews and everything like that. But coming right up, we have a video about like the cultural state of Pokemon and how it seems like people just want to hate on it right now. Um, but um. The video is going to speak for itself. Enjoy and then check out the review. Obviously, um, I uh, hope you guys enjoy both of those. And let's go. I'm going to be honest. I don't understand all this uh, unjustified hate for Pokemon, especially now that there's new games coming out. But it almost seems like there's always a bandwagon to hate on something whenever something comes out. And if you genuinely didn't like the game, all right, you're entitled to your opinion. But like I said in my review for my other channel, how much times can they really shake this series up? And is it really something that needs to be fixed? Because things kind of felt a little shaken up in this one in a good way. I mean, sure, it didn't get executed the way that it was possible, but it didn't ruin the experience of the game. But when I play the game, I really try not to look for reasons to just say, oh, this, this ruined the experience for me. I'm done. And I'm going to be very judgmental in this video because this is about like current gamers in general. And I have to be honest that I did enjoy this game. Now, there were some points in my review where I said there were things that fell flat and I wish there were things that they did differently. But what's said and done is said and done. And there's no actual like going back and fixing any of it. I mean, they could update the game and everything. I understand that. I really do miss the whole Mega Evolutions. Um, they should have kept the Mega Evolutions instead of terrestrializing. So I'm not trying to defend this game or say it's perfect, but a buddy of mine on my Facebook actually ended up pointing out that people just like to hate on things. And as, unless it's something like Cyberpunk 2077 release, which was a disaster, I really don't think you can hold them with any sort of contempt. I mean, you could hold them with criticism, definitely, but not really the contempt that sometimes people like to reach out. And I know this is not every fan of Pokemon. Don't get me wrong. In fact, I'm a fan of Pokemon. I haven't played a lot of games because it just kind of seemed like the same old song and dance, but I'd rather stay away from it and just kind of allow it to be its own thing because once it's no longer for me, I don't have to tear it down or go on a mission to kind of just destroy it. I just kind of go away from it. It's kind of like Marvel after the um, Infinity Saga was over. You know, I got what I asked for. I stayed for a couple encores, obviously. The Spider-Man movies were really good. But overall, a lot of those movies just weren't for me. So I'm not going to ruin the whole thing for everybody else. I'm going to let it play its course and let the people who still want to stay on board say what they have to say. But kind of hopping back into the series, because I stopped playing midway through Sun and Moon, because I was not a fan of Sun and Moon. I know a lot of other people like that game but it has a lot of criticism to it and I understand that criticism I wasn't having a good time with it so I kind of dipped out and then you have things like sword and shield which I'm kind of glad I just stayed away from I have a copy of Pokemon sword um, that I actually feel like I should probably get well excuse me not get but play because I've already gotten it sorry it's early morning but I might go back play it and just accept what it is I'm not really going to you know hate on it because I could turn that console off at any time but I, I, I just want to know, what is it about Pokemon now that brings out all these haters? I mean, look, I understand that after nine generations, how are you going to keep punching out creative Pokemon? And some of the Pokemon designs, to me, I will admit, sound silly, but I don't have to catch those Pokemon. In fact, what I look at it as is I'm going to catch the original 150 and make an OG team that is going to ransack the new generation and shows it how the old people did it. Because I'm getting older. I will own that badge. I'm going to be doing that until my hairs are gray. I'm going to be that old man that comes in with a bunch of Gengars and then goes after a bunch of Bidoofs. I'm taking lemons and turning it into lemonade, right? But there's a reason that you have over a thousand Pokemon to begin with. I mean, yeah, you have to pick a starter. And yeah, sometimes the starter Pokemon kind of seem a little ugh. But you know, not everything is perfect. But I'm going to, like, quote, everybody loves Raymond, but this is why we can't have nice things. And it's because if you give a generation, like, nine generations worth of a game that takes a lot of effort 
And I could see some uh, rep- repetition in the codes for the game, in the patterns for what the game was spitting out. But I'm not going to let that ruin the experience. Now we're so spoiled by some really nice looking games that it's it's just a matter of time before everybody like kind of just it's never good enough. Like like it's like kind of like when I play Assassin's Creed Odyssey and people are like, oh man, you like to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah, I understand that that's not really an Assassin's-based story, but it has the same game mechanics. It's a fun RPG, and I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and just hate on it. Even though the real critics of Assassin's Creed Odyssey are very few and far between compared to the people who want to hate on this next generation of Pokemon games. But I get it. Although it's not perfect, I still had a good time while I was playing it. I think that's what counts. I think there's just too many people online who love to be overly critical about all of these video games. Because sometimes I feel like a lot of people get hypersensitive to one thing going wrong. And trust me, I notice flaws. I notice flaws. But, you know, like I said, man, nothing's perfect. Except Pokemon Gold and Silver. Those were perfect experiences. But we're not going to talk about that because that's in the past. But, uh, yeah, it just kind of, like, gets to me personally when you see uh, people have so many nice games that to the pa- to the fact that, like, we're spoiled. I was playing Beat Saber not too long ago, and I couldn't feel a shred of sorrow because I was so proud of, like, how well they did on that game and how immersive an, of an experience that they made that virtual reality. And all I could do was love that game. But you'll see some schmo come across and just be like, oh yeah, you know what, I'm going to hate on Beat Saber because it's a knockoff of Guitar Hero or da 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 or da 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 I mean, I try not to get like this, but one thing like I really just don't like is lack of appreciation. Unless something is a train wreck, it shouldn't be treated like a train wreck. And I feel like a lot of people are treating this game like it's a train wreck. When it's got some negatives, it's got moments where it really did fall flat, but overall, like, there were some positives that made it a very immersive experience, and I actually enjoyed the work. And if you just, what you're going to do is, how do I put this logically? Yeah, there's some game developers who have really just dropped the ball and haven't taken criticism right and have really just thrown it back in the face. I'm looking at you, creators of the new Saints Row game. But when you have people who do kind of take criticism right and they do try and keep things fresh and they do take mass accountability and these kind of things tend to uh, get good, like they're actually going to take the criticism and the Pokemon uh, game developers aren't anywhere as bad as the Saints Row developers. Let me tell you that much. They are actually very, they seem like very good-hearted people. I haven't really read a whole lot from them. I don't know them personally. But the work that they're continuously pumping out at Nintendo Studios, I give praise to because at least there's effort there. And they're trying to please millions of fans of this franchise. I understand. And when people just go on, I'm going to look for things to hate. That's how you get good developers becoming just like the Saints Row developers. That's how you get good friends not putting in effort for the friendship. You, you, when you have a good thing and there's more good things to point out about something than there are negatives and you just want to focus on the negatives, they're going to stop bringing you the positive. And there are a lot of game developers who don't take that responsibility. Saints Row, Saints Row, Saints Row, Saints Row. But you don't want Pokemon developers acting like Saints Row developers. That would be an absolute tragedy. And then you would have a reason to actually back out of the series and never play one of their games again. And I'm not, I know this is not every Pokemon fan out there because I know there's a lot of Pokemon fans who are enjoying their experience with Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. But the gratitude amongst gamers, I feel, is starting to become less and less and less. And I understand that criticizing things and trying to give them constructive criticism to make them better is a good thing. But when all you're doing is discouraging them and talking down on them and trying to hate on them, you have a problem. So if you are not guilty of this, I'm not talking about you. But I'm going to te- I'm gonna see who's guilty of this because of who dislikes this video. That... Maybe you got to look at the positives a little bit more with this game and understand that it's got a form of escape. It's something that you can do a lot of things with. It's a really nice tool that you could build a foundation off of if you just looked at it the right way. And it's not horrible. 
Trust me, I've sat through horrible. And I'm not going to say Saints Row. I'm going to say something like uh, Halo Master Chief Collection multiplayer when it first came out, right? That was, a, that was a disaster because the game didn't work. But when the game started working, it was actually a very fun experience to play and it was a lot of nostalgia. But boy oh boy, let me tell you, that sometimes when I see people just look to hate on these things or anything that's good or anything that, you know, just to, just to kind of make some noise, I get all publicity is good publicity in a lot of people's eyes and for the most part that's true, it's going to draw attention. But getting negative reception all the time is really going to cause people to turn away from you eventually. But, you know, that's kind of like my ramble about why, you know, people are, it bothers me that people are hating on this game as much as they are. Um, and again, like for the 30th time, I'm not saying this is a perfect game. I see its flaws. Go check out my review where I point out what I didn't like and what I did like. I stand by giving the game a solid 7 out of 10. But these video game haters really need to kind of like step back a little bit. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time.